Okay guys, welcome one and all. Today we are going to be looking at the Arcade Fun handheld over from Walmart. This is a very sketchy looking device and I've always wanted to do one of these on these multi consoles. So let's plug it in and see exactly what we are dealing with. Talking about build quality, the buttons are all pretty nice and responsive. A little loose, but they are clicky. We've got a pretty nice reset button that has a nice clip to it. And the actual plastic on this is really good compared to what you'd imagine. It's not Game Boy or Switch level, but it is extremely serviceable for what it is. Other than that, you will find the user manual that no one needs ever. A really shitty cable for the video and audio, which is only in mono, by the way and this shitty little less than a foot inch cord that literally just charges the console, which I will say is nice that you can charge it. Now, let's move on to some games. Okay, so the first thing I noticed whenever I boot up this console is that A, this is basically every Chinese Famicom bootleg that you've seen on the market on NES and games. It's just a bunch all put in one. Weirdly, there is some quality to be had here, but we'll get into that in a minute. What you'll notice immediately is that there is a mix of games that you've never heard of, and some games mistranslated, some you'll actually know from heart. I mean, let's just begin here with Fantasy Zone number three, because it is a good example of graphic quality. So disregarding the music as I'm using all just clean tracks for this video, this fantasy zone looks okay here and there, but you can definitely tell there's a lot of glitching and flickering that shouldn't really be present, especially considering that I'm pretty sure this is just a bootleg version of fantasy zone. However, this does actually warn of some pretty bad graphical quality throughout the whole console, and as you'll see later, the cord is so bad that it actually flickers stuff all the time. Okay, Excite Bike. Now, first of all, I'd like to say that I already know what Excite Bike looks like. You guys know those ugly blue stripes on the freaking menu shouldn't be there. But honestly, otherwise, the weird thing actually is, is that that's where all the graphical bad stuff stops in this video game. As you'll see when the footage goes on, it doesn't look awful, it's a little bit crushed here and there, but it's honestly a lot more to look at. Weirdly, this game, just like the rest of them, I'm actually just using clean tracks from the game, but honestly, the audio wasn't too bad on this one. It seems like with this whole console, the main thing is to find that there is actually some quality to be had, like I said, and this is what I meant by that, is Excite Bike in specific. But it seems like the actual consistency of quality is where it kind of starts to fall apart. Now, there's not much else to say here. It's just weird to think that Excite Bike is oddly doing well for itself on this console. But then again, it is one of the most simple NES games that there is, so I don't know if I should give it points for that or not. Okay, looking at Assart. Now, first of all, that name, <laughs> I swear to God, I can't even. But weirdly, this is actually a game that I think is somewhere between bootleg and kind of original. You're not going to see this everywhere, so how does it hold up? It doesn't. I literally can't figure it out. It controls like garbage. And you just kind of move from space to space like it's a board game. It feels weird. Even though it doesn't come across on the footage, it has this weird flickery quality and it keeps on switching up all the colors a little bit as if it's having some problems. I actually never figured out what you're supposed to do. I can only assume that you're supposed to try to cover all of the squares in blue without repeating squares, but no clue. No clue at all. I don't care, and it sucks. 
Snow Bros. Now this is a weird case because, first of all, this is actually just the Japanese version of Snow Bros. I don't know why. Another thing about it is that this is almost perfect when you're playing. Even though the footage looks extremely flickery, it wasn't like that as bad on the actual, like, game as it is here on the footage. And while I was looking this back and doing my lines, I actually had to re-record to talk about this. So, you'll see that it's got some flicker to it, but it isn't this bad, at least on my TV or my console or anything. But considering how this whole thing has gone so far, I don't even know if this is going to be a case-by-case, console-by-console thing. You buy yourself one, it might be worse. Who even knows? This thing doesn't even have any kind of consistency, and this proves it. Number 30, Pikachu. So Pikachu, if you guys have never heard of this one, is a bootleg of Tetris. Now, while that may not seem like something that would be much to talk about, I know Tetris, I'm a big, massive Tetris player as of the moment, and I'm learning to play on a much more high level. I can tell you so much wrong, so much right, and just give you my general thoughts without any problem. The first thing, and the main thing that's going to hurt you in this Tetris bootleg, is the control on the D-pad. If you touch it, even the slightest touch, will send you three or four spaces left or right. And while this doesn't sound problematic to someone that doesn't play Tetris much, it will wreck flow real bad. But however, you're going to notice there's a few cuts here and there. That's because I played this for a very long time to forge an opinion and just get a real feel for this game. Because Tetris is one of those games, if you play it, you know it. And so you know exactly what it's supposed to feel like. Now the cool thing about this bootleg is actually Pikachu himself. I'm pretty sure the sprites that are in the middle window there are actually from Pokemon Yellow. Whenever you talk to him in the game. And he kind of just reacts to all your moves in Tetris. And while this is not a good bootleg, I gotta say that this is absolutely adorable. And I do unapologetically love this game. So, again, do I recommend this as a good product? Well, no. But, <laughs> honestly, this does have enough to where I think the $10 price tag is worth it. As weird as it sounds. The only other thing I got to say about this exact thing is that that cute dancing Pikachu is awesome. And there's not a lot more I can say about the game itself. Do I think this is really actually a good console? No. There's a lot of graphical qualities and a lot of things about it that make it suck. But I think there's just enough quality in here to push it over the finish line to worth curiosity. That's all I got for today, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have enjoyed your time here. And if you don't like what you see, don't pick it up. It does suck. But it sucks in that right way, just like a B-film or something. If you have a friend over, you're going to have a good time.